Well, thank you, Matthew, for that introduction. <laughs> I appreciate it. Good morning, and welcome. It is wonderful to see each and every one of you here. Welcome to those of you who are joining us live streaming. We are so pleased that you are part of this worship service as well. I'm Vance Polly. I'm the pastor of Sunrise Presbyterian Church. Worship leaders this morning include Reese Smith, Matthew Parker, Heidi and Kent Kenyon, Eric Lavender, the choir, the handbell choir. It is the Christmas season, and the music is absolutely wonderful, which is part of the next announcement, which is that we have consolidated our worship services so that we're now holding a single one at 11 o'clock during the Christmas season, figuring that, one, the music is so wonderful that everyone wants to be part of it, and the second is that as we are all gathered here, the singing of the Christmas hymns and carols is enthusiastic, wonderful, and joyful. So the reminder is that our Sunday morning during the Christmas season begins as early as 9.30 with fellowship. So as you start arriving early, there's coffee and there's food. Sunday school for adults is at 10 a.m. Also, the family service is at 10 a.m. And it is both in person and Zooming as well as the adult Sunday school class. And then 11 o'clock worship. Fellowship ha is going on from about 9.30 to 10.45. There'll always be coffee and refreshments after the 11 o'clock service. They're set up and waiting for us. The bulletins are posted online or you can also have picked them up by email. They are helpful, but they're not essential to full participation in worship. You will see a phone number in front of me. That number is for our ministry of prayer. For those of you at that time who would like to request a name be spoken as part of the prayer, please text it to the number 843-437-4239. A couple of other announcements. We're concluding the gathering of the information, the dedications for either poinsettias or for the Christmas music, and you may make those dedications. We have inserts in the bulletin as well as those forums in the narthex, and they're posted online. The live nativity was yesterday evening, and it was a rousing success. To those of you who came and participated, were part of it, thank you the volunteers from behind the scenes to the ones that were the reenactors. The whole thing was absolutely wonderful. It was a number that, frankly, we didn't expect. So if you ask the team that were in the kitchen preparing the refreshments, they were quickly overwhelmed. Absolutely every disposable cup we had in the building was used. We dipped into the food for fellowship. Sorry for those of you that are here today. There's food, but not as much as there was originally. Um, estimates run from 450 to almost 500 people came through. So it was absolutely wonderful. It was exciting. So thank you to everyone. It was a real joy. We had everything outdoors. And as I jokingly said, um, what do you think? We have... Uh, Florida, South Florida, Christmas weather. I mean, it was so warm. Moon was out. It was absolutely beautiful. It was glorious. Reminder of the other in-person things that are going on here at Sunrise. Um, as I mentioned, family service, both Zoom in person, the adult Sunday school, also the men's prayer breakfast. Now that's in person, Tuesday mornings, 7.30 a.m., and there's a devotional. So 
please, if that's something of interest to you, come and join us. We have a wonderful time, good gathering, good group of people. Uh, Miriam Naomi Circle will be meeting this Tuesday morning. There's the option for Zoom or telephoning in if you wish to be part of it, but the Miriam Naomi Circle will gather at 10 o'clock Tuesday and it's part of our continued study of the Gospel according to John. Well, friends, technology allows us to all be together sharing in person, virtually. It's a way for us to be an extended and a larger community of faith. Friends, may we greet one another in spirit. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. As quietly as the winter steals upon us, the season of joy approaches. We wait for our Redeemer, for God's promise to be fulfilled. The day is coming quickly. The God of mercy draws near. Therefore, we wait with joy 
attentive to all the signs of his coming. You may be seated. Thank you, that was beautiful. This is our opportunity to present ourselves openly and honestly before God. As we gather to worship, opening our hearts and bearing them so that we may present an honest picture let us do that now in one voice. God, with unhurried gentleness, you draw near us, bidding us lift our eyes to the infinite stars and open them to the ordinary wonders all around us. We see the waning sun, the dazzle of holiday display, each other's weary faces, and we know that we have seen this all before. We cannot claim a breathless anticipation of the birth of your son. From the prophet's good news to the shepherd's joyful witness, we have heard it all before. The season is familiar and holds no surprises. God, remind us that your power and love are both ancient and ever new. Help us to recognize the love born into the world at each moment. Then with glad hearts, may we welcome your son before whom even the desert blooms and rejoices.
Brothers and sisters, during this season of Advent, the words we spoke are often true. We do get tired, we do get weary. We don't always appreciate the joy and the beauty of the season. But the season is upon us and it is a reminder that we have a renewed spirit. That even though we live imperfect lives, that the God we worship is a loving God, a forgiving God, full of grace, whose mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. In Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Alleluia. You may be seated. First scripture lesson from 1 Samuel, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse, helps to have a little bit of background as you listen for it. The reason you are hearing it this Sunday is because shortly you will also hear Mary's prayer, Mary's song known as the Magnificat. We sang in this last hymn a number of the words, the phrases that are used from the Magnificat. So it may be a new hymn for us during Advent, but it's very fitting for the theme and for this season. Mary's song is drawn from Hannah's. And I'll speak more about this in the message, but that Hannah's prayer is one of acknowledgement of God's grace in a time of struggle and difficulty and she is praising the way God cares for those in the greatest need. So I want you to listen to Hannah's prayer which led to the birth of Samuel. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because, because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord. No one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more, no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry 
are fat with the spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol, that is the place of the dead, and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you so much. That was so beautiful and it wove together wonderful themes, both of the Advent season and reminding us of Christmas Eve and Christmas night. From the Gospel according to Luke, this was the occasion when Mary went to visit Elizabeth and you're going to hear what I referenced as the Magnificat. This is Mary's prayer, song of gratitude, and I know that some of the words in it are surprising in the context of gratitude. We'll reflect on that a little later in the message. But listen again to an important part of the Christmas story. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to the Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? That the mother of my Lord comes to me. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He's brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained about three months and then returned to her home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us bow together in prayer. Lord, still in us all voices but your own. Help us to listen, to hear, and to embrace what you want to teach us this day. Bless us with a reverent sense of your presence that we may be at peace. Encourage us to worship you with our whole body, mind, and spirit. Then, send us out into the world, a people renewed and empowered for service. Amen. Before I move into my message, I'm going to grab a glass of water. Um, I'm fighting allergies, so I take my allergy medicine, and sometimes that dehydrates me. <laughs> I want to begin with this statement about the message. The gospel according to Luke is preaching to the Christian community at a time of great change. The adult Sunday school class is spending, and some of us are joking about this, quite a period of time working our way through the gospel according to Luke. We are surprised at the amount of time it's taking us to read it, and yet we are amazed at the message that we're learning. One of the powerful things about the Gospel according to Luke is that it has a sequel, the Acts of the Apostle. If you look at the Bible in your pew, you'll notice that the Gospel of John is set between the two because in the Bible, in the canon, the Gospels are grouped and then you move on, Acts of the Apostles. But the Gospel according to Luke and the Acts of the Apostle are connected. 
and they're about the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the community. And the gospel according to Luke is laying the foundation for the changes that the church is experiencing. One of the most powerful things in those changes is how to be a community of faith in a changing world. The people that were the disciples of Jesus expected the end of times to happen very quickly. And as the years passed, they struggled to figure out what they were supposed to do and who they were supposed to be. The Gospel according to Luke in many ways is addressing that underlying issue. But to the story for today. It's a very personal story. There's a personal connection that takes place. And I want to highlight a couple of things. You see first and foremost two women meeting with each other both expecting at different stages in their lives. And all of that's very important. There is this joy of that encounter, of the two of them coming together. But the stages of their lives are critical to the very account and why it's in the Gospel according to Luke. We know that Elizabeth had been long childless and in her time, not to be able to have children was seen as some type of punishment from God. And she was heartbroken. And her prayers were that that would be answered and she would have a child. And we know that child will be John the Baptist. Her joy in having a child at that point in her life were remarkable. Mary, at the other end, as a very young woman, bearing a child of the Holy Spirit, those two children, those two infants, who first encounter each other before they're born, and the personal connection that takes place. Do you realize how remarkable it is that we have an account that's completely focused on the testimony of two women and their encounter? We take it for granted. But in the time that the Gospel according to Luke would have been written, it was highly unusual to highlight, to lift up a story. The message is coming, the witness from the women. And the connections are important. When Mary gives that prayer, connecting with the prayer of Hannah is all part of a deep historical connection. It goes back into the life of the people of Israel. It's a prayer from Hannah, whose son was Samuel, who she dedicated to service to the Lord, and Samuel's the one who would anoint David as king, actually Saul as well. And so you have this deep connection when the gospel according to Luke lifts up the words of Mary that go back to the prayer of Hannah. Lots of connections are being made and people are remembering. What are they remembering? God's faithfulness across the generations. That's the foundation. Those are the roots. And now, in this present moment, these two women meeting each other, something new is coming into the world. Now, I told you that I was going to say something about the nature of the prayer. We hear about the Magnificat, and we hear the opening praise, but then we begin to get into the words. And I'm going to stay with Mary's prayer rather than Hannah's, but they're very similar in how they talk about the world. And this is important. In Mary's prayer, we hear her singing the praises, not only of God, but what God does. I want to just lift up a couple of phrases and verses because these are good news in the Gospel according to Luke. 
What she's doing here is she is lifting up that God has seen the lowliness of this servant and has lifted her up. And those who believe they were lifted up find that it's otherwise. What the Gospel according to Luke is telling us is that the way God sees the world is not necessarily the way we live in the world. The inbreaking of something new is that God cares for everybody. And God is lifting up those who wonder if God cares for them. You hear those themes? The long waiting mother waiting to have a child late in life. The poor, the hungry. God is there to care and to lift up. It's an abiding theme and it's one that the Gospel according to Luke repeats again and again. And if you're not sure how often it's repeated, ask any of the members of the adult Sunday school class and they will tell you, right Ken, how often that theme is repeated again and again because the Gospel according to Luke returns to it. The good news is how much God cares for everyone. What does this have to do with us today in our present situation? I am absolutely convinced that one of the things that's happening for us now is that we're having to reimagine how church works. It's not working as it has for generations. The pandemic has just simply brought us to the point of saying, all right, things are going to be somewhat different. How is that going to look? The Bible says an awful lot about those moments in which the way in which we are connected with God is changing. It happens. It has happened again and again and again, and we're there. Do you feel blessed? Come on, smile at me. Come here. You're, you're, you're sitting here and saying, oh Lord, please don't bless me this much. Um, the point with this is that too often we wonder, are we going to be commissioned to do something different? Are we going to be commissioned to find something new and remarkable? And what I can tell you is that when that commissioning takes place, it's seldom an easy or a comfortable feeling. I am absolutely convinced that we are being called upon to imagine how to be a community of faith in a world that is definitely changing. I'm also absolutely convinced that all the tools we need have been given to us. The scriptures give us a witness and guidance. Oh, it's not a recipe, but it's a witness and it's guidance and it's reassurance that God is definitely here, now, acting with us. The theme of Advent is the Emmanuel. God is with us. God is with us. How we share that is the only question. And it is going to be different. And it's going to make a difference. And so we're in this season of discovery. We're looking at a new year that is not like former years. But it's a year with opportunity. And it's a year full of hope. And we're still together in different ways, but we are together. So as we make this journey, we have the opportunity to continue to be God's faithful, to trust God in our midst, and to allow God to work through us. Amen. Would you stand with me that in one voice, 
we might join our hearts in words that have bound Christians together across the centuries, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. As we prepare to join our hearts together in our ministry of prayer, you're invited to lift up the names of those in special need of prayer. You may text those names to me. Those of you gathered here in worship may also speak those, and as always, you may lift them from the silence of your hearts. Let us bow together in prayer. Most loving and merciful God, in this season, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, our Savior, for the remarkable ways in which he has been present in the lives of your people, from the times when he walked the earth, broke bread with his disciples, to the ways in which He's actively involved in your church. We give thanks for the strength that we draw from him, from your, for your love, and for the richness of your grace. We trust you in each and every moment, even when we struggle to understand all the ways in which you would have us serve you. Open our eyes and our hearts to the many needs of your world and then show us how you would have each one of us serve you. We begin our prayers this morning with those who face the overwhelming experience of a natural disaster, especially those facing the aftermath of the tornado that tore through four states, took lives brought much grief. Show us how we might help. The needs of your people are great, and yet you will bring together our efforts, weave them into a way that brings hope and your promise. Much closer to home, we pray for those whom we do lift up by name. Everett, May each of the people whose names have been spoken or lifted in silence feel the extra measure of your love and your grace and your comfort. For we offer this prayer in your most holy name and in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Friends, 
The blessings of God are incredible. In response to all that God has done for us, may we now continue worshiping God as we present our gifts, our offerings, and our tithes. Most gracious God, receive these gifts as the very tokens of our devotion. Here and now, we offer to you these gifts in gratitude for all that you have done for us. Here and now, we rededicate our lives in service to the risen Lord. Show us how you would use us in the coming week. For we make this dedication in the name of the one who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.